more than 25,000 fans expected here at the Kingdom in Seattle for the Western Regional Finals of this NCAA championship. Seton Hall Pirates, the challengers, and the UNLV running rebels trying to get back to the final four. They are the defending national champions, and the winner today moves on to Indianapolis next week for the final four. And good evening, everyone. I'm Dick Stockton. Ever since this tournament began, the microscope has been on UNLV, and admittedly, they are not playing anywhere near their best basketball of the season, yet they continue to roll along, and they have now won 44 consecutive games. Working with Bill Cunningham, and Bill, how does UNLV LV feel about playing Seton Hall in this regional final. Oh, they want a piece of this team, and Dr. Tarkanian is hoping <laughs> that they're going to get that shot of intensity that's been lacking. They have not played that extremely well, and they hope to get that today against Seton Hall, and they're going to get it against a very tough team. They have proved the toughness Seton Hall has in the Big East tournament and in upsetting Arizona. But what kind of a chance does Seton Hall have in this game? Well, if you speak to the coaches and the players, they believe they're going to win the national championship, and they're playing so well at the end of the season. One game, though, that sticks out in their mind, the last week, the Georgetown game with UNLV. They say, hey, we beat Georgetown twice at the end of the year. Why can't we beat these guys? They're brimming with confidence but they could be a fly in the ointment. And for more of that, right now, let's go to Leslie Visser. Leslie? Dick, they're starting to call them Terry and the Pirates around here, but DeHare may be slightly slow today. He suffered a bruise to his right thigh in the first half against Arizona. He was treated with electrical stimulation and ice for the past 24 hours, and trainer John Levitt pronounces him at 85 to 90 percent. There's another interesting story from Seton Hall. That's forward Arturis Knishevis, the freshman from Lithuania. When he came to this country two years ago, he didn't speak any English. He learned it by reading the newspapers and watching the family feud. Well, of course, the newspapers back in Lithuania have been filled with the Soviet invasion of the Baltic states. Artur said he has not spoken to his family in more than two months. He can't get through to them, but that he hopes to spend the summer with them. So we'll be back with tip-off. It's top-ranked UNLV and the Pirates of Seton Hall when we return. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship Regional Final Game from Seattle, Washington is sponsored by today's Chevrolet, who invites you to see why more people are winning with the heartbeat of America. Xerox, the document company. And by United Airlines, come fly the airline that spans more than half the world. There's a thread that runs through our lives. A thread that binds us together. Friendship, family, pride. These are the values that endure. The best things have always been those that last. Chevrolet, the truck that lasts. This year, 38% of all travelers will visit a city they've never been to before. To make sure they're 100% comfortable at home and abroad, Holiday Inn has created Crown Plaza. The amenities of a big city hotel with the warmth of Holiday Inn. Holiday Inn Crown Plaza. Stay with someone you know who really knows you. Beautiful city in the Pacific Northwest, Seattle, Washington. The scene of many Final Fours and Regional Finals. And here at the Kingdome, the scene of the Western Regional Final. All eyes on the Kingdome for the UNLV running Rebels as they try to extend their undefeated season. Seton Hall will have Winchester and Carnitivus up front with Avent at center, Taylor into Hare at guard, Johnson, Augman, and Ackles, the front court for the running Rebels, Hunt and Anthony, the back court. The officials... Lenny Wirtz, veteran from Mount Healthy, Ohio, working with Ed Hightower from Alton, Illinois, and Rusty Herring from Durham, North Carolina. Seton Hall with victories over Pepperdine, Creighton, and Arizona to get to this regional final. And, of course, the Arizona game was an upset. 
Played tough down the stretch to win that game 81-77. And UNLV over Montana, Georgetown, and Utah to get to this game, Bill. Your final thoughts before tip-off. Well, first coach I've heard all year mention playing against UNLV that he wasn't going to really look to hold the basketball and use a lot of that 45-second clock with P.J. Carlissimo. They'll look to slow it down a hair, but they just feel so confident that they can go right after this UNLV ball club. Rebels in white, Seton Hall in blue. Stacey Augman guarded by Gordon Winchester. UNLV up. Stacey. A little change for UNLV. Anthony is going to match up against the hair, and that means Hunt is going to have to ni initiate the aggressive defense from that lead guard position. Taylor defended by Hunt. Taylor's the point guard. Winchester gets the offensive rebound on the miss. The basket will go, and there'll be a foul against the Rebel. Congratulations to Kansas and Roy Williams. They're heading for the final four with a victory over Arkansas, impressively coming from behind. Larry Johnson picking up that foul, and Gordon Winchester, who has averaged 12 points in the last two games. That's five more than a season's average on the line. He's going to be asked to do more than he normally does because when UNL, when Seton Hall misses the shot, he's got to be back there defensively. They need three people back to stop UNLV's fast break. Anderson Hunt, short with the three, picked off by Avent. Here's the lead pass to the hair. Altman won't get in his way, and it's five to two. We see this Seton Hall ball club. They look, they have fire in their eyes. They wanted a piece of this UNLV ball club. And a whistle and a foul away from the ball. Now, good look up the court by Taylor. And there's the hair finishing it off. The hair coming in, averaging 27 points a game in the three playoff games thus far. Foul was on Arturis Kardishevis. First foul against Seton Hall. Here's George Ackles hitting from outside and missing. Good rebound by Winchester. A minute and a half has gone by. Seton Hall leading 5-2. to two. Loop it in the game from Karnishevis. Winchester with another offensive rebound, his second. Well, what we've seen is two offensive rebounds against UNLV. They're just showing that the, the Seton Hall team has, is going to have a presence on the boards and play physical basketball. Karnishevis, red hot from three in the last game against Arizona, hits his first. Eight straight runoff by the Pirates. Anderson Hunt misses a two-point attempt. And Seton Hall all over the defensive board. So far, Larry Johnson has not touched the basketball for UNLV. They're going to have to get him involved. Driving is Taylor, and it's tipped and missed. Rebound by Augman. Winchester going after it, and they're going to call the foul against Seton Hall's Gordon Winchester. A couple of the things, we, one of them we just saw with Taylor penetrating against the defensive pressure being applied by UNLV. They're going to look to penetrate, to beat that pressure, to look to go back door. And we also saw the lob to Avent because they'll be looking to front him. Seton Hall has won six in a row, 12 of their last 13, but no one can match the winning streak right now of 44 by the running rebel. Driving into Stacy Offman. He has all four Rebel points. It just shows his versatility that he can go left, he can go right, and he can hit the, the deep jump shot. Slapped away by Ackles. It's still Seton Hall's ball. Last defeat by UNLV was February 26th of 1990, and it was UC Santa Barbara who administered the law. Winchester gets it to Avon. Slapped away by Stacy Altman on a three-on-one fast break. The trailer is Larry Johnson. That's Rebel basketball. Turnover leading to easy opportunities. Karnishevitz 
Stay with him is Larry Johnson. He bent over Atkins. Saving it, not quite, was Greg Anthony. Now watch, Avent will put it on the floor, quick hands by Augman, and there they are. Three on one, fast break. Anthony making the right decision, finding Larry Johnson. Seton Hall will inbound. Now we see the, the Amoeba defense. The Amoeba defense, which we'll explain, was used primarily against Utah predominantly in the second half to great success. Taylor hits the jumper to make it 10-6. Coming right back is Stacey Altman, and he's got six points so far. They don't allow you to take a deep breath. Right now, the Rebels back to the man-to-man. is short with the three. Rebound, Aukman. Lead pass. Good pass by Anthony. Larry Johnson. Always there to follow it up for his second hoop. Averaging 23 a game, and he led the team against Utah. High to 10. Spirited opening minutes here at Seattle. One of the problems UNLV has had defensively, we see it right there, making the entry pass. Their big people aren't getting out and denying the entry pass. Arnishavis trying to get around Larry Johnson, and that will be the second personal foul against the guy who not only has been the big offensive force, but the emotional man for the Rebels in the last game. People love the convenience of fax machines. What most of us don't like are funny paper faxes that curl up and are hard to read. That's why Xerox makes more kinds of plain paper fax machines than anyone else for documents that are easy to read and a pleasure to handle because they're on good old plain paper. Plain paper fax machines from Xerox, the way to put it together. Putting it together. Faxing, scanning, copying, printing. Xerox, the document company. When you respond to people's everyday needs, show concern for their safety, and have an understanding of what an honest value really means, a very nice thing happens. They put you in their driveway. Last year, 1,364,096 people did just that. They made Chevrolet Geo the best-selling cars in America. Thanks. Or should we say, thanks a million. The heartbeat of America, that's today's Chevrolet. When you're looking for mystery, you always start at the scene of the crime. Premieres Wednesday, April 3rd on CBS Late Night. It's too hot to sleep. One of the things Coach Carlissimo wanted to do is have three people back defensively against the UNLV fast break. One of the players is circled. Gordon Winchester is supposed to be the one getting back as soon as the shot's attempted, and we see that he's not even getting back on the fast-breaking opportunities, and that's something that's got to concern Coach Carlissimo. Inside to Jerry Walker, who's come into the game. Jerry Walker, an important man for his physical presence, played 31 minutes against Arizona. Pirates are up by two. Knocked away by Walker. Five minutes have gone by in this opening half. Inside Larry Johnson on the baseline. Now I wonder if Seton Hall doesn't go back and go at Larry Johnson, seeing that he picked up his second early foul. Johnson and Augman each have six points. The rest of the Rebels are 0 for 4 shooting. Here is Walker. They're trying to go at Johnson, but the ball is slapped away. And here's Anderson Hunt with Carnison just behind him, and he misses the layup. Oliver 
Taylor yeah. penetrated. Basket, no. Let's see if the basket counts. An offensive foul has been called. And no basket. Now, look at Larry Johnson holding off Walker. He's so strong with that left arm, giving him that easy opportunity to the hole. Into the game for UNLV is Elmore Spencer, their seven-foot junior center, who had a terrific game against Utah. And Brian Kaver is now in at point guard for Seton Hall, a freshman. He's got tremendous point. Jerry Walker has picked up a foul, and that will be the 14 foul against the Pirates. It appears after that timeout, one of the things that Coach Sarkanian wanted to do was to get Larry Johnson involved at the offensive end of the court because the last two times, they've tried to go inside. Johnson close to the basket against Walker. They bent the rebound. Pressure by Anthony, and Avent showing his ball handling skill. For 6'10", not bad. When, with Spencer in the ball game now for UNLV, it just gives them a lot of more strength up front. Takes away a little bit of quickness, though. Hunt is all over the hair. They're going to have to get him involved, setting some screens and allowing him to come off for some open shots. The hair has scored only two points so far, and Stacy Augman reaches in. And that will be his first personal foul and the 13th foul against UNLV. UNLV foul on the 32. Now what? Look at Hunt just trying to face guard him, getting up on him, putting that pressure on him, not allowing him to shoot the jump shot. That's the man UNLV is looking to stop. And on the loop pass, nearly careless, Anthony nearly picked it off. Giving up his dribble was Avent and... Greg Anthony gets it back. Seton Hall was sloppy there, and UNLV was alert. Well, the big factor for UNLV so far is turnovers. They've been able to create them. From the corner, a two-point basket by Greg Anthony, who said, right now, we're a very average team, when he was talked to yesterday about the Rebels. But he, he was the most vocal about getting an opportunity to play against Seton Hall. He said, boy, I was rooting for them. We won a piece of this team. Terry DeHair fires for three, and the rebound is by Altman. Here's the number break, three on one. Haber, the only one back, and Anderson Hunt. So the two guards start cooking for UNLV, and the Rebels are up by four. One problem you have when you're playing against UNLV, especially Hunt, as soon as any shot goes up, he releases, trying to get out into the open court. DeHair for three, and he's got this. That's the first three-point basket of the game. That's the lead in one. Spencer over Avon. And a lot of blue shirts. Seton Hall doing a terrific job off the defensive board. And they're going to need their guards, as we just saw, everyone getting back in there and helping on the defensive glass. And another turnover. Five turnovers against Seton Hall and a three-on-one break. Johnson was the trailer. And it was the freshman guard, Brian Caver, who nicked him, and it'll be a foul. Now right here, DeHair shoots it. Now look at Hunt. He is gone already looking for that outlet pass as soon as that shot goes up. Gordon Winchester checks back in the game, replacing Brian Caver. Winchester. Oliver Taylor and DeHair in the backcourt along with Avent, Winchester, and Jerry Walker. Eaton Hall has made only one substitution. Elmore Spencer for Ackles at center, and he's still in there. And they're going to get Walker with another foul. That'll be his second and the 16th foul against... Seton Hall and one more team foul and UNLV will be in the bonus. And a timeout in a one-point game. Which 4x4 half-ton pickup gives you better ground clearance, Chevy or Ford? Both try to drive over this protected camera cage. First, the Chevy. Plenty of clearance, but the Ford. 
cameras don't lie. No wonder more truck owners switched to Chevy last year than to any other truck. When it comes to ground clearance, more people are winning with... Heartbeat of America. Now it's easy to win with a heartbeat. Catherine, I want to tell you something very, very important. Daddy got a raise. That means I can buy you a sandbox, a sliding board. What do you think? You think we should put some of it away? What do you know about the stock market? I love you, little Jenny Catherine. Guess what? Daddy got a raise. And I'm Harry Smith. She's one of Hollywood's brightest stars. Oscar nominee and star of The Grifters, Angelica Houston, Monday on CBS This Morning. Well, tomorrow at 1 o'clock Eastern, the regional final preview issues on and off the court with Pat O'Brien and Mike Francesa, Quinn Buckner, Bill Walton, and Len Elmore will join them. Temple against North Carolina for the Eastern Regional Championship. Temple, the lowest seed remaining in number 10. And St. John's, who shocked Big Ten Ohio State against the Duke Blue Devils. They, too, would like to make another trip to the Final Four. Arturis Karnishevis has returned to the game for Seton Hall. So far, UNLV has capitalized on five turnovers for eight points. That's half of their total so far. Anthony driving in. Oliver Taylor in a three-on-two opportunity for the Pirates. Let's go. Taylor misses Johnson board. Should have pulled up the foul line. He had a three-on-two fast-breaking opportunity. Spencer nearly lost the ball to Abed. Goes in, travels. One of the few Rebel turnovers thus far. That's their first, actually, of the game. And George Ackles will return to the game, the starting center for UNLV, and Elmore Spencer will go out. Leading scorer so far for Seton Hall, Terry DeHair has five points. Larry Johnson and Stacey Augman each have six for UNLV. And here is DeHair, short with the jump shot. Greg Anthony. To Johnson. Karnishevis was trying to overplay, and it was Anthony Avent who came along on the weak side to commit the personal, and that's the seventh against Seton Hall, and it's the bonus for UNLV. Uh, when Larry Johnson posts up, you're looking at a man that is 6'6", 250 pounds, and he just spreads all of that out, getting that good position, and he always gives the, the guard a, a target for him. You'll see him reach and put, put his left hand out as he did that time, and that's what the guard's supposed to hit. And he's a man you have to watch when UNLV puts on the spurt because Larry Johnson scored the first nine points, for example, in the second half against Utah to send them on their way. Leads the team in scoring, rebounding, and free throw shooting. And makes one out of two in the first trip to the line tonight for the Rebels. The hair short from the corner. He has been front rimming, rimming virtually all his jumpers. Because he, he's that pressure from Anthony and Hunt come running at him, and he's trying to get it off a little too quickly to beat that pressure coming at him. Greg Anthony, that's a two. He hit one earlier from the same spot. Four points for Greg Anthony, came in averaging 12. Double team, triple team. Hard off the glass. Finally draws the foul. That's great, relentless offensive board work by Avent against three defenders. It sure was, and he has got to react a little better, though, when that double team comes down. That time, Anthony came down to help defensively. He's got to find the open man who's on the perimeter for an easy jump shot. 
Oliver Taylor leaves the game for Seton Hall, and Brian Kaver, the freshman, replaces the senior. Greg Anthony with the personal foul, and that's the 14 foul against UNLV. Anthony Aven on the line. He survived foul trouble against Arizona in the semifinal game. In the southeast region, Kansas defeated the top seed Arkansas to move to the final four in Indianapolis next week. One free throw for Anthony Avent. Three-point lead for the Rebels. Three-point territory, and Karnishevis gets the rebound. Notice how Ackles got rid of it when he was double and triple team. That's what you have to do and find and get that open jump. Haver misses the jumper. Seton Hall has not been effective in hitting the perimeter shot thus far. Ball goes through, and it was last touched by Stacy Augman. Jerry Walker. Jerry Walker checking in for Seton Hall. Comes back in, and Anthony Avent will go to the bench. Avent has scored only one point after coming in as the second-leading scorer for the Pirates at 18 again. That's that good defense, interior defense. What they're doing is fronting him down low, and Seton Hall hasn't been able to exploit that by throwing the lob so far in this game. Here's the Amoeba defense. Nearly another turnover. What they want to do is get the ball into the middle of the court, feeling that's the vulnerability. Karnishevis has it blocked by Hoffman, blocked by Eccles. Pretty impressive defense by UNLV and Anderson Huff. It'll be Seton Hall ball. That, that was just a great series of plays defensively and then Seton Hall getting back so well defensively. Very impressive interior defense by UNLV. The last trip down for Seton Hall. Rebels by three with 9-10 remaining in the first half. When, when Avent goes out of the game, they have no inside offensive threat for Seton Hall. So UNLV can afford to extend their man-to-man. -man. Absolutely, and not be concerned about the post ball. Caver fires it up, in and out, tipped by Winchester. And Caver can't save it. UNLV takes over. Now we'll see, this is against the Amoeba defense. Karnishefis penetrates, but here they converge on him. Ogman blocking, and now watch the next block. The beauty is, the ball stays in play, and it leads to a fast-breaking opportunity for UNLV. Oliver Taylor back in the game. Seton Hall now is going to his own. They're in their 1-3-1 zone. They're in because of the penalty situation. And Larry Johnson's post play. And no Aven in the game. Spencer with a nifty pass inside to Anderson Hunt. Hoffman misses. Hoffman goes up. And they call it a tie-up. It'll be Seton Hall's possession, but you've got to be impressed with UNLV's strength inside right now. <laughs> to say the least, they just dominated in there. And that's why we see Avent coming back in the game for Coach Colissimo. Let's hear this. Pretty rugged stuff underneath. Now, there were four, four UNLV players on the boards. If, it's, if Seton Hall could have gotten the rebound, they would have had an easy, fast-breaking layup. They quickly converge on hair with two people. Taylor at the other side for three. And the rebound, long rebound to UNLV. They've got a three on two. And they'll set it up. Seton Hall is shooting 25% from the field and a three-point basket by Hunt. UNLV is showing their different looks in this game a little bit more than you normally see. They're, they're going to their amoeba defense now. What they're going to do, Seton Hall, is try to get into the middle or skip past it. In other words, throw it over the top to the weak side. The hair gets his own rebound with short again and converts this time. The basket counts and a foul, but Seton Hall had missed 12 shots in a row before DeHair converted on the follow-up. 
Now here's the amoeba defense, which actually ends up being a matchup zone where there's always someone playing their area against the ball. The problem this time is the swing and the penetration to the basket was just too easy. Right there, you're not supposed to be able to do that against the zone. The amoeba defense, of course, the brainchild, Tim Gerger, learned it from Don Egley, who was a coach at Penn State when Bobby Weiss played for them in the 60s, and then Buzz Riddle, who was a pit coach, and Gergerich learned in the western Pennsylvania area. He's there to pass the Carnesimus and Tabor come back to Seton Hall and a timeout with seven and a half to play. A tradition unlike any other, the Masters on CBS. Playing basketball is hard on your body, but it's really tough on your feet. The pump. Where were you when I needed you? If I could play today, I'd pump up for support, protection, and a custom fit. Hey, it's time to move to a new neighborhood. Pump up and air out. Switch to the greatest sports performance shoe in the world, the Reebok Pump. Pump up and air out. The Which car has the best long-lasting protection against rust when scratched? Chevy Lumina, Ford Taurus, Honda Accord, or Mercedes-Benz? In these corrosion chambers, 30 days equals two years. Chevy Lumina's two-sided galvanized steel is unsurpassed in corrosion protection. With Ford, Honda, and Mercedes, sooner or later, you get this. By only scratching the surface, you can see why more people are winning with the heartbeat of America. That's today's Chevrolet. Carlissimo is the one or five or six best coaches in the country, but he also is regarded as maybe got another career as a designer. He had a hand in designing this t-shirt, which is a takeoff on the old Pink Floyd t-shirt, another brick in the wall. This is called another win for the hall. Dick? All right, Leslie, they're looking for one win here. It'll be the biggest maybe they've had in a long, long while as Hunt misses the three-point attempt and Seton Hall coming back down. Here's the time remaining in the first half inside the Avon. Here's one guy who's not been able to get off offensively thus far, and that's his first field goal of the game. And I'm sure the players were made aware of that by Coach Carlissimo at that timeout. DJ Carlissimo said yesterday this team has surprised him. Somehow he says we're always finding a way to fight through adversity. George Ackles will come back in replacing Elmore Spencer. Neither UNLV center has scored yet, and they've been averaging 14 a game combined. In the Stacey Aukman. Distance there, and he's got eight points. Isn't it something? The, the growth in this young man since he went first went to UNLV and the Olympic team. But you know, he was strictly known as a defensive player, and now he can go inside, outside, drive left or right. Carnishavis hits his second three-point basket. He was three for four against Arizona, and now we're tied again at 24. Seton Hall playing that one-three-one zone. for three and he's got it well you're so right about his offense he was by the way the youngest member of that a u.s olympic team that got the bronze and soul in 88. going for the loose ball another turnover the hair lost it here's anthony unlv looking every bit the role of a national champion right now leading by five when i watch unlv to see if they're shocked it's them getting to loose balls and creating turnovers, and they've done all of those things in this first half. Offensive foul. Push off with the left hand by Arturis Karnishevis. We're at the King Dome in Seattle, Washington, in the West Regional Final. This is Dick Stockton along with Bill Cunningham and Leslie Visser. 
as the running Rebel. Jerry Walker in who have not played their best ball, but within one game of getting back Seton to the Final Four. And leading Seton Hall 29 to 24, and a timeout called by the Pirates. It's not how much you pay that counts, but what you get for your money. This consumer tip was brought to you by Michelin. Because so much is riding on your tires. Dean Witter believed in listening. Listen, not only to what our clients say, but what they mean. Each client has a level of comfort. Endeavor to find it. We measure success one investor at a time. Some people think Marge Connor is, well, frugal. Because she clips coupons redeems cans, buys her holiday decorations the second week of January, finds a penny, picks it up, and often takes her granddaughter for breakfast at McDonald's. Because at McDonald's today, new lower prices really give you a break. And these days, what's wrong with being a little, well, frugal? Ready for some good news? If your car is in an accident and you have Allstate insurance, you can leave it in our hands. All states recommended pro shops can do everything, including the estimate, in one stop. And to make you feel even better, Allstate will guarantee their workmanship for as long as you own your car. Well, that's the news. Now, be careful. You're in good hands with Allstate, a member of the Sears Financial Network. Who knows how much money Saddam Hussein has hidden away? 60 Minutes does. At least 10 billion stashed in 15 countries. Tune in Sunday. Everybody else will. They've been truly the run and rebel so far. 10 to 2. You Seton Hall because of the offensive boards have had the edge there. Seton Hall has not hit well. Three of their last 15. And no patience with their setups. Larry Johnson is fouled. Got the ball inside. Right now, let's go to Leslie Visser. Les? Dick, during the last timeout, P.J. Carlissimo said what Billy Cunningham just said. He wants them to show patience. He also wants them to concentrate on their transition defense and on the dribble penetration. He wants them to finish the play, not just try to go one-on-one. -on -one. Dick? I'm not surprised that the coach here would have an idea what the coach there was. I was scared to death he was going to tell, be telling him something else. <laughs> Arturis Karnishevis has picked up his third personal foul, the first player in the game to do so. Larry Johnson, who is an 83% free throw shooter, misses. How does that hurt them? Oh, well, it hurts him because he's shooting the ball so well from the perimeter that would open it up and just give Seton Hall another weapon. But the problem, too, is we're watching UNLV have the ability to go inside to get it to Larry Johnson, even against the zone. Thirty to twenty-four, six-point lead. Each side has had a six-point advantage in this first half. Five and a half minutes to play. Overplaying man to man, Jerry Walker, who replaced Karnishevis. De Hair. That one drops for him. Two-point basket for De Hair, who's only four for nine. Boy, UNLV just doesn't give you a second to take a breath. They just come firing back out at you. They have certainly awakened, regardless of the result of this game. They're playing a lot more sprightly than they did in the previous two games. Johnson on a lob from Aukman, beautifully executed. Larry Johnson with 10 now. Aukman has 11. Winchester into Avent. They overplay, and if they get it, fine. If they miss, it's an easy layup, and Avent now has five. One of the things you, when you watch UNLV and they go to their set defense offense against the zone is watch how they space the basketball. Larry Johnson. They continue to get the ball to Larry Johnson, who is planted under the basket. And Johnson has 12 points. Winchester. Good pass inside to Avon. Seton Hall going inside as well. Good patience. They have to tighten up their defense. UNLV is scoring too easily. Now there's that spacing I was talking about. Three-point attempt by Hunt. Walker boxing out. There's a great 
age is young man. Walker, you know, the last game, I was saying, boy, he's got bad hands and he can't handle the basketball. Well, I found out the poor young man has got a bad thumb, he's got a bad wrist, and it's been for two months, and all the, the only way he can get healed is two months of vacation. The hair misses. Rebound by Anthony. He hopes that vacation doesn't start tomorrow. Hunt hits a three. Anderson Hunt with his second three-point basket. And a seven-point lead, the largest of the game for either team, with 3.13 to go in the first half. Seton Hall is undefeated on neutral courts this year at 7-0. They're playing the best right now. Walker trying to post up against Ackles. And to Hare. Foul, Greg Anthony claiming it was a push-off. Well, tonight on CBS, CBS special movie, where the hell's that goal? Tonight on CBS. Three substitutions for the Rebels. Checking in Substitutions. Three, Travis Bice, a 6'5 junior from the Simi Valley, California, has come in. Everett Gray, a sophomore from Bloomington, California. There's Larry Johnson getting a rest with 12 points. And Elmore Spencer comes in at center. Two shots. On the line for two is Terry DeHair. 84% this season from the line. How do you look at this game? It is now a 37-31 game, and Seton Hall has been really outplayed thus far. Absolutely. At both ends of the court right in the last several minutes of this game. Earlier in the game, at least they were doing the job on the boards, getting some up at the second chances. Right now, UNLV is doing it offensively, getting easy opportunities and getting and doing the job defensively. The hair goes out of the game and Brian Caver replaces him. The hair leads Seton Hall with 12. One of the problems Seton Hall has had with DeHair, who's really been a savior for them in this tournament, is shot selection. I don't always like the shots he takes. Uh, I'm sure of one thing. They're very happy that Larry Johnson is on the bench. Hunt. Oh, Anthony misses the shot. Rebound taken down by Taylor, and he's tripped up from behind by Greg Anthony. That'll be the 17 foul against UNLV in the bonus for Seton Hall. Now, Anthony is going to try and sneak in there and get the steal, and what he does is get the back of the sneaker of Taylor. And each team now, Bill, has three personal fouls. Greg Anthony committing his third right there, and, of course, Arturis Karnishevis, who's been on the bench for Seton Hall with three. But more important one is Greg Anthony, because he's the leader of this ball club, setting up the offense, and he was doing an excellent job defensively against the hair. Just pounding him all Number over the court. Larry Johnson. They don't give Larry Johnson much of a rest. He checks back in. Anderson Hunt, you saw, came in for Anthony, who goes out with three. Now more responsibility. Hunt now has to become the lead guard. And, and Jerry Tarkanian was hoping that next year he would be his lead guard, but being thrust into this spot. And Vice, who would go to the off guard, he is the three-point shooter. He can shoot the ball pretty well from the perimeter. Hunt, by the way, has not had an outstanding tournament. He's averaging six points fewer than the season's average, and he's averaging seven turnovers for one assist per game. Not very good. Taylor gets both free throws, and the lead is down to three. Johnson wasn't underneath. Let me tell you, great defense by Walker. He was fronting, and he was able to see the basketball and make the steal. Now they're in the amoeba, looking to get the ball inside or skip pass, which they just did. Ever since P.J. Carlissa will call the timeout, Seton Hall has been a lot more patient. Oh, I think he raised his voice. Avent in the middle, surrounded. Good defense. Five seconds left on the 45-second clock. They have to get a wild one up. Taylor fires it up wildly. Avent gets the offensive rebound, and he's fouled. Everett Gray on the foul. And that was a 
Brayer thrown up there, which is answered because now they get an opportunity to, to get two points out of this possession. There is our soft Barnea. More of that international flavor on the Pirates, the freshman from Israel, who has come in replacing Jerry Walker. Aben has seven points, second leading scorer to Terry DeHair's 12 thus far for Seton Hall. Terry DeHair will check back in with 141 left. Seton Hall has done a terrific job off the offensive glass. It's kept them in the game. And another area they've done a good job is starting this ball game, they were getting hurt with transition easy opportunities for UNLV. They've just done a better job getting back as a team, stopping them. It's a one-point game for UNLV. They were up by seven. Now they're back into that zone. Vice, he's the three-point threat, as you mentioned, 47% from there. Here's the zone. the one right there in the corner looking for the jump shot. Everett Gray forces that one up, but it's going to come back in the hands of Vice with a minute to go. And a two-point attempt is missed by Anderson Hunt, and it's laid by Everett Gray. Everett Gray went, oops, look what I found. 39 to 36 in favor of the Rebels with under a minute to go. Shot clock is on for 35 seconds. Well, you could see one thing in this first half. When we said in the opening that Seton Hall wanted to play UNLV and had no fear, and they weren't going to look to come down and just use the clock. They wanted to, go to, wanted to go after them, and they have to feel pretty good going in here at halftime. Big thing for them is that they lost patience early and were not really taken out of the game totally. And the big key was the timeout by Coach Carlissimo. There's the time remaining, and the shot clock down to three. <laughs> Missed by Caver. Final seconds. Anderson. And there's the buzzer. But a well-played first half of basketball. And that is the end of the first half with the score. UNLV 39 and Seton Hall 36. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship will continue after this message and a word from your local station. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship Regional Final Game is sponsored by the greatest sports performance shoe in the world, the Reebok Pump. Pump up and air out. Michelin, because so much is riding on your tires. And by Allstate for home, auto, life, and business insurance. You're in good hands with Allstate. satisfied with your John Deere mower. We'll give you your money back. Because in a matter as important as a lawnmower, you deserve to be happy. So long as you both shall live. Oldsmobile, official car for NCAA championships, calls this timeout to tell you about the other game in town. The Oldsmobile drive to the Final Four Celephon. At your Olds dealer, you can get a great deal on every new 1991 Oldsmobile. In addition to the terrific values, you'll also have a shot at winning hundreds of prizes like a new Cutlass Supreme or a large screen TV. Hey, with deals like this, you can't miss. 
somewhere between crime and punishment is dark justice. Premieres Friday, April 5th on CBS Late Night. It's too hot to sleep. If you want to be a frontier doctor, you've got to love the outdoors. Oh, my God! You've got to love people. We brought this man here to keep us healthy. And here we are, all sick. Got to love the wildlife. You don't think I'm woman enough? They say it's magical stuff. What's a wash and dry? Northern Exposure returns April 8th. This is CBS. If you want to pay less for high-octane power, less for an excellent detergent package, less for superb engine performance, all in one gasoline, forget about Chevron, Texaco, or Unical. You'll find it at Arco. Arco's powerful new Super Unleaded. On average, it's 10 cents a gallon less than other major Super Unleaded's. Arco's low-priced, high-powered Super Unleaded. There's no better gasoline at any price. How do you keep your finger on the pulse of Wall Street? Touch 4. It's free, and it's only in your Centel First Source phone book. Want to stay in touch with your soap? Call Touch 4. It's free, and it's only in your Centel First Source phone book. Want to know what the stars hold in store? This is your sign. Touch 4. It's free, and it's only in your Centel First Source phone book. Stacey Augman and Larry Johnson have combined for 23 points. UNLV leads Seton Hall 39 to 36. And hi again, everybody. I'm Pat O'Brien. Would you guys know it's getting dark outside? We're still here. Mike Francesa, Curry, Kirkpatrick. And true to form this game so far? I think about what you would expect. You know, they talked before the game about Seton Hall challenging him as far as the tempo would go. But Seton Hall backed it off, showed the patience, did well on the offensive glass. They can do it defensively. I think they're right where they want to be right now. They can take this right to the wire. And if it gets real close down the end, the way they shoot fouls, the way they play defense, they're in it. I think this is going to be a very close game. Mike, I like what Arturis Karnishevis said. The Lithuanian from Seton Hall is just learning to speak English. He called the NCAA the student championship this week. And UNLV, for, for them, it's a new day in class. P.J.'s yelling at his players going off. What's that all about? You know, P.J. has, uh, you know, risen to be a big coaching star now. He's one of the top coaches in America. But he has a habit lately of really taking off on his players on the bench. It's something I think he has to watch a little bit. All right, guys, a reminder that tomorrow we'll join you at 1 o'clock Eastern time with our last two stops on the road to the Final Four. We will explore the role of the student-athlete, for instance, is anybody going to school while this tournament is going on? Bill Walton, Quinn Buckner, uh, Len Elmore will help answer that question, among others. Then at uh, 1.40, Temple of North Carolina will tip it off over in the Meadowlands, followed at 4 by St. John's and Duke at the Silverdome in Pontiac. All four teams held workouts, and our Bill Raftery took advantage of that opportunity to seek out the wisest owl, John Chaney, and ask him, among other things, about his senior star, Mark Macon. John Chaney watching your favorite player, and, and I say that off the floor, he was good as a high school kid, he's become better under you. How great can he be? Well, I think uh, Mark is going to be a great, great pro. Perhaps I, I offer more limitations to uh, what he can be. The college is so difficult. You know yourself, it's man for man one minute, it's zone the other. But once he gets that true reading up and down the floor where it's man for man, in the pros, I think Mark's going to make a, a great pro. Very much like Alvin Robinson, I would say. You and Vic Karstarpin last night got into a little exchange. He was laughing, thinking it was over. When is it over and these youngsters could laugh? I just think it's nice to try to raise youngsters to, to be balanced, have a balanced attitude. I don't like to see teams emotionally drunk. Uh, until the bell rings, I think you can get into the dressing room. Uh, there was a poem by Walt Whitman which was called, I Celebrate Myself. I think it's important for youngsters to be taught how to handle your emotions so you can direct it in the best interest of your team, especially when you're in charge of 13, 14 youngsters. I understand the NCAA received a very unusual request from Temple that you be placed here so that you could be close to the roast beef and corned beef capital of America. That's your pre-game meal. <laughs> $13.50 for corned beef out of a, a, a deli in New York. At Cheney uh, State, you wouldn't have been able to afford it. Never, never. <laughs> but it's just such great fun to be able to buy a sandwich for $13.50. <laughs> you're not used to it. That was a whole meal the old days. <laughs> that was a whole meal. <laughs> 
don't know how much fun that is buying a sandwich for thirteen dollars though he's a great guy you know but i like the story of mark macon going back tomorrow to the meadowlands you know after what happened to him there as a freshman the great expectations over his whole career i think that's a terrific story i'm surprised about the sandwiches john cheney's such a food maven he sometimes goes into south philly and gets food and fruits and vegetables to cook up his own stew he told me the other day the last thing he did before he went to the Meadowlands was cook up a pot of chili, didn't get to eat it. I think what he's cooking up now has to be a game plan. <laughs> I guess so. Well, Kansas cooked up a game plan uh, today, Curry. A third time in six years, they're going to the Final Four, upsetting Arkansas 93-81. to Beginning of the game, the Hogs were all over this one. Todd Day uh, shined on this one, 21 points. Uh, Arkansas up by 12 at the half. The Jayhawks came back strong second half. Alonzo Jamison having the game of his life with the layup there, and the Hawks started to gain momentum. Kansas went for the kill late in the second half. Sean Tunstall nailed a three-pointer to ice the game. Kansas becomes the first team to advance to the Final Four now with that 12-point victory. And checking the women's road to the Final Four, Connecticut defeated Clemson in the East Regional Final. In the Mideast, the Lady Volunteers have also sewn up a spot in New Orleans. And now here's how that Final Four is taking shape. And of course, we'll have the women's championship for you uh, next weekend. And we did crown a new college basketball champion earlier today. Our congratulations to the University of North Alabama Alabama, the Lions from Florence, Alabama, won the NCAA Division II title. In other sports news, Monica Selish captured a women's final in a straight set victory over Gabriella Sabatini. And in golf, Jim Hallett has a three-stroke lead now. After three rounds in New Orleans, Jack Nicholas, who began the day in the lead, shot a 74, trails by six. Tom Watson paired with Nicholas, shot 73, and is seven strokes back. And as we reported earlier, Sergei Bubka, the Soviet Union, continues to defy gravity for the third time in two weeks. Bubka shattered his world pole vault record. Today in Grenoble, France, Bubka vaulted 20 feet and one inch. And uh, one last comment from you guys on this game. Uh, Hall's got to stay in here till the final. Can they win this if they stay in until the last couple, three minutes? I don't think they will, but they'll be in it all the way. They have to be patient, and they play good defense and get the hair, get shooting the ball a little better from the perimeter, but they can stay in this game all the way. Pick well, one. P PJ said, get me to the last five minutes, and we'll win it. Uh, and I give the Hall a chance. You know, it's, it's a good game. Right now it is time for go back to Dick and Billy to get you all back to work in Seattle. Uh, Seton Hall, UNLV, there are 20 minutes. One of them is 20 minutes away from Indianapolis. I'm Pat O'Brien with Mike Francesa, Curry Kirkpatrick. Enjoy this second half here on CBS. There's a car moving into the pits. Let's go down to Dan Hawk. Dan? I want to sound like a GT, Jim. I wasn't reading for the pit stop, Chief. And we're adding air conditioning, cruise control, AM, FM, stereo, cassette, power windows, power door locks. Guys, don't forget the floor man. And our rear spoiler, too. Yep, you got it. The works. All these options that a savings of up to $800. What do you think? wanted a Celica. I heard about the offer. Am I on TV? All this when you buy a new Celica GT? That's right, Jim. Back to you. The airline that spans 10 countries across Asia and the Pacific now brings you United's renowned international service nonstop to London's Heathrow Airport through five U.S. cities. Fly the airline that's uniting the world. Come fly the friendly skies. If your sporty car doesn't feel so sporty anymore, you need a change. By the team, the BF Goodrich Tire Team. They'll put on BF Goodrich T8 Performance Tires. Tires designed just for your sporty car. It's a whole new level of performance. Feel the difference. See your BF Goodrich tire team if they don't see you first. When it comes to delivered pizza, you know who gets there sooner. If you want it hot and you want it fresh, you want it sooner. Now for just $9.99, get two medium, two topping pizzas. Call Domino's Pizza. When you're the owner, you've got to give a lot more. Avis is the only major rent-a-car company owned by its employees. So they'll give you more than low rates. You get free unlimited mileage, too. Avis, we're trying harder than ever. UNLV leading Seton Hall, 39 to 36. And we'll return to Seattle after this message and a word from your local station. You're watching CBS Sports, exclusive coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship. Diet Cola. Diet 
What's it like to break the mold? Taste the cold of Diet 7 Up. The cold. Feel it take you a few degrees away from the everyday. Diet 7 Up with NutraSweet. Break the ice. Here's bullish news from Mazda. Now is the time to invest in a 626, the sedan with the best basic warranty in its class. Get a 626 LX now and get big savings on a package of our most popular options. Plus, get $1,500 cash back from Mazda. Total savings, $2,320. It's Mazda's best deal ever, but it won't last forever. Right time, right car, right deal. Save $2,320 on a Mazda 626 LX now. Listen, we can't avoid it. The next item before the board is benefits. Well, first of all, this cost issue has got to be addressed. Come on, Steve. These benefits are for our people. Some of them have been around since we ran this place out of a garage. John, you're forgetting one thing. What's that? I'm one of those people. <clears throat> we'll do our best. We won't let them down. Mass Mutual, we help you keep your promises. This is CBS. Saturn, a new quality. I just can't believe anybody would buy anything but a Saturn after driving mine. Special value priced Saturns, as low as $1.99 per month at Saturn of West Sahara. Subaru Spring Value Days begin with Loyal, yours at $99.75. Legacy Sports Sedan, yours at $309 a month. Justy, fun and affordable at only $68.95. Finley Subaru, 3112 East Fremont. The Buffet at the Gold Coast. The best foods for the best price anywhere. Take our words for it. Head for the Gold Coast Buffet, the last word in reasonably priced dining. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship Regional Final Game is sponsored by Mazda Cars and Trucks. Mazda, it just feels right. Pizza Hut and their new MVP four-topping pizza. And by Mass Mutual. At Mass Mutual, we help you keep your promises. UNLV with a three-point lead, and right now, let's send you over to Leslie Visser. Leslie? Here with a man who knows how tough it is to play UNLV, Rick Majerus of Utah. Rick, what can Seton Hall do? Well, Seton Hall's in good shape right now. They've got to continue to... Con conversion defense is going to be important, and they've got to continue to board with them and not let them get those easy shots. I think they're in terrific shape. All right, uh, Billy, just at the end of the first half, P.J. Carlissimo uh, had some words for uh, Asaf Barnet as they were going off the uh, court. Uh, as a former coach, what went on here? Well, he was just starting his, his halftime talk a little bit early. Tarkanian waited till he got into the locker room. How do you look at this game right now, uh, going into the second half, the Seton Hall down by three points? Well, I think that Seton Hall has to be very happy. Two things. For UNLV, they must do a better job on the defensive boards, and they have to get this game into their tempo. Seton Hall controlled the tempo. Anthony, Greg Anthony, has three personal fouls, and that really could be a big factor for UNLV because he's on the bench with three, and they need his floor leadership. Oh, he is the leader of that ball club. Uh, if, if, if he, and we can't forget that uh, Larry Johnson also has two and was able to play the last, well, 14 minutes with just two fouls. So that's going to be a big key. Seton Hall missed four, 12 shots in a row at one point, shot only 35%. UNLV with the fast break edge at points 13 to 2, but Seton Hall with 10 to 5 edge in offensive rebounds. Terry DeHare with 12, Larry Johnson with 12 are the leading scorers, and we're underway in the second half with Rebels ball. Johnson had 12, Stacy Augman was right behind with 11 points. Haven had nine, backing up to Hare's 12 for Seton Hall. George Ackman, who did not score in the first half, misses in the rebound by Oliver Taylor. So it's Taylor and to Hare at guard. And up front, it's Karnishevis, who's playing with three personals, Haven and Gordon Winchester. Now they can't wait 
to get Avent involved in the offense because it took up oh, almost 13 minutes before he got involved with the set offense of Seton Hall. The hair in the lane. Gets the rebound. A good opportunity for the Pirates. Larry Johnson hits the three. He had been one for eight from three-point range in the tournament coming into this game. in traffic, loses the ball to UNLV. Seton Hall turned it over five minutes early in the game, only twice in the last 12. Anderson Hunt, who's three for 13, shooting. He struggled shooting against Seton Hall two years ago in Denver in the regional final. We've seen the impact that guards are having for Seton Hall on the defensive boards. They're, they're, they have half of the defensive rebounds for this ball club. Good pressure by UNLV coming out of the locker room. Now can they sustain it? Taylor, too hard off the glass. Remember, Utah was only down by six at halftime in the semifinal Thursday. Rebels ran away with it after that. Stacey Augman with his first points of the second half. So coming out of the locker room, UNLV is the sharper team. Seton Hall's got to get the ball inside. Ackles. Steals the pass intended for Avon. Larry Johnson with 17 points. And Seton Hall is going to call a timeout here. A 7 to nothing run here in the second half. Come on, you guys. We're going to be late. So what? We're just going to lose again anyway. The Mazda MPV four-wheel drive can help you get just about anywhere you want to go. Let's go home. Its V6 engine and rear anti-lock brakes let you handle even the worst weather with confidence. Face it, Mom, we stink. Hey, where's that team spirit, huh? Hey, Gail, the other team couldn't make it. You guys win by forfeit. The Mazda MPV four-wheel drive. It just feels right. If the weather stays bad, we can take the tire. Final Four, call on Pizza Hut for the new MVP pizza. Loaded with pepperoni, mushrooms, Italian sausage, and green peppers. Get one for $7.99 and a second for just $4 more. Now that you're the lover, gonna take It's only natural that children look to their parents for answers. So to help you explain why some things that may be fine for adults aren't right for children, Anheuser-Busch offers family talk. Free advice from professionals to use with your kids while they're still learning to be grown up. And their favorite teacher is you. Let's stop underage drinking before it starts. Its prestige is unmatched in the sport of golf. CBS proudly presents a tradition unlike any other. Masters. If you're wondering how UNLV can get this tempo going the way they'd like to, it's at the defensive end of the court, and now they're in the open court. And watch the end of this play. Anthony having the confidence and seeing Larry Johnson, who lays it in. Two things, the great hands and the concentration on the rim. 17 to 2 and fast break points and another turnover. Ackles long pass to Augman. So the Rebels not stalled as a result of that timeout called by PJ. Anthony is over on the side. Greg Anthony is shaken up. Right now, let's go to Leslie Visser. Les? Uh, during the last timeout, Dick, P.J. used it sort of as an emotional charge. He went down the line to each player. Karnishevis, are you okay? Avon, are you okay? And to Taylor, he said, I have three words for you, Ollie. Run the offense. Dick. All right, Leslie. Now, look at the hustle here by Greg Anthony. Calissimo throwing a cross-body block. Now, this is the way, this is what we're used to seeing 
of UNLV basketball-wise. The problem they've had all through this tournament, oh, you see the wax, that he picked up some wax on his sneakers when he ran over and made that great steal. But can they sustain this type of defensive pressure? Biggest lead of the game right now, 10 points, 46 to 36. There's a loop into Larry Johnson. Jerry Walker, who came in for Gordon Winchester, nearly causes the turnover, but you can't get rid of that man that easily. Loose balls. That's when you, you know, as we mentioned in the first half, when they were playing well, they're just all over the place. Anything loose. Hawkman stepped out of bounds, but very close to yet another steal by the Rebels. Seton Hall has not scored a basket in nearly seven and a half minutes going back to the first half. Long and, drought. And they haven't had a good opportunity. That's even worse for them. They have to hang up the phone, clean up the water, check out the wax. You need some help there. It looks like they cleaned up the playing surface, but might not have cleaned up the out-of-bounds area with the wax. Brian Tabor moves into the lineup for Seton Hall. And Oliver Taylor is out. The UNLV, 9 to nothing this half, and yet another turnover. They scored 11 straight points going back to the first half. They're putting on a show now. Anderson Hunt slices in. Now this is a clinic they're putting on for this first four minutes of this second half on how to play defense. Now they're out denying. Look at them all over the place. What a great save by Stacy Ogman and a foul called against Terry DeHare. And Greg Anthony looked like he might have jammed his wrist in the process. Well, the happiest man in this building right now is Jerry Tarkanian. Because this is what he said that his team has been lacking and they're actually giving it to him right now. Yesterday they worked on the floor. What was the ratio of bleach to water, Billy? <laughs> Four to one okay. bleach. I wanted to get that right. <laughs> the UNLV was I, I was out there. Did you see me? Yeah. yeah. I was the guy with the on my knees scraping the floor. <laughs> right. Winchester in the lineup now for Seton Hall. Larry Johnson hits another three, his second in two tries, and he's got 22 points. UNLV to this point has blown this one open, have outscored Seton Hall 14 to nothing here in the second half. The hair. Winchester finally breaks the drought for Seton Hall. It took them eight and a half minutes. And guess what? Hunt comes back with a three. I'll tell you what, this is just beautiful to watch the basketball that UNLV is playing at this moment. If they sustain it, they're going to answer a lot of questions. <laughs> Walker draws the foul inside, and that will be only the first team foul against the Rebels in this half. George Ackles with his first. Well, what you're going to have to do, though, if you see the ball, is when you say execute your offense, that means setting the good screens, allowing people to pop out and receive the pass to get into their offense. They're not doing those things. They're allowing this great pressure to just overwhelm them. The senior, Oliver Taylor, replaces the freshman who's talking with P.J. Carlissimo, Brian Caber, and Jerry Walker on the free throw line. 17-2 run by the running Rebels to open up the second half. Shooting giving them a solid cushion. There's a lot of people that can relate to that run that they've beaten through this 44-game winning streak. Someone's got to step forward, an individual, to get things turned around to see the ball. And right now, it's got to be Anthony Avent. He's the senior of this ball club that's on the court. And a lone holdover from the final four of two years ago. They see Auckland. They're just getting the loose balls, as you pointed out. Hunt. Finally, DeHare and Avent go after it, but 
but UNLV is taking a toll out of Seton Hall right here. Aven rolls it in. Good strong move to the, with his left hand. Hunt. That will be Hunt's first personal foul. Now that was the best series we've seen this half by Seton Hall. Excellent defense, and what it led for them is, is an opportunity with two foul shots. Timeout called by Jerry Tarkanian. UNLV putting on a show in the second half, leading by 15. It's the Canon Futura. With futuristic flash and long-range power zoom lens. The Futura from Canon. So advanced, it's simple. Extra strength Rolaids antacid. Stronger because it has more calcium carbonate. More than any Tums tablet. And salt-free. More calcium carbonate and salt-free. This settles it once and for all. For the first time in history, the compact pickup ranked most trouble-free was also ranked highest in truck customer satisfaction. Mazda, a truck so tough, we guarantee it long enough for a trip around the world. Twice, oh, ha! Mazda trucks, guaranteed tough. The Lord Jen, Dr. Chen. I know we're running a little late, but it was certainly worth it. I thank you You've all. You've got 25 minutes to make your flight. We're not going to make it. The clock's running, but you're crawling. We're not going to make it. Good thing you're with the rent-a-car company with a built-in shortcut. Hertz, America's wheels. Hertz, instant return. You get your receipt on the spot in the lot. It's just one more way Hertz helps you beat the clock. I knew we'd make it. Hertz, America's wheels. He's the defense, she's the DA, and every week, who wins in the end is always a surprise. The Antagonists, Tuesday. Roundtable issues on and off the court with Pat O'Brien and Mike Francesa, Quinn Buckner, Bill Walton, and Len Elmore, distinguished crew. And tomorrow, the regional finals continue with Temple against North Carolina and St. John's and Duke, two ACC teams going at it in the East and in the Midwest regional finals. Everett Gray and Elmore Spencer come back in the lineup for the Running Rebels, and Anderson Hunt still hurting a bit on the bench. And boy, that would be some loss to this UNLV ball club. And he hurt that. He had a problem with that in the first half. And then he banged it again when he, went, when he took that foul on Winchester. Hunt has hit three three-point baskets in this game. Lead is 14. Oliver Taylor with his second foul. Seton Hall has Fire extended down, their defense. Oliver They're looking Taylor. to pick up now full court. Second personal. Second team foul. Each team has been hit with two team fouls. Greg Anthony had 10 assists against Utah and only one turnover. Nine assists and two turnovers. Playing another solid game. But also playing with three person. Larry Johnson. Everett Gray wins the race from DeHare, but stepped on the line. And it'll be Seton Hall's over. Well, DeHare pushed him out of bounds and got away with it. Now watch this right here. DeHare just pushes him with his left hand, and he slides there. I just wonder if that's the wax again. DeHare misses a three and the rebound by Gray. DeHare had 12 points at halftime, is yet to score. Stacey Auckland edges his way in. Rebound by... And he's fouled. 
Right now, let's send you over to Leslie Visser. Les Dick, Dick Anderson Hunt uh, sprained his left shoulder actually in the first half, and then he sprained it again. He jammed it again on that foul. When I asked him, are you going back in, he said, most definitely. Dick. I would think that uh, most definitely they need him, and most definitely he wants to play more. And most definitely, if he sits over there very long, that's going to stiffen up on him. So I would expect him to get, as soon as the pain goes away, to be back in the ball game so he doesn't get cooled down. Anthony Amen committed that last foul. He's going to go out as Arturis Karnishevis. Will come in. Winchester sits down and not Amen. Amen with two fouls remains in the game. Elmore Spencer, who tied a season high with 15 points against Utah, it's one free throw. Okay, they're in that amoeba defense now, putting pressure on the ball. Karnishevis, who was a big three-point threat against Arizona, is hit on the arm by Everett Gray. It surprises me a little bit that they're going to the amoeba because they've been so aggressive with their man-to-man. -man. And here we see it. It's a matchup zone looking to play that the basketball, coming out and pressing, pressuring it, picking up the foul right here against Karnishevis. Tark used the amoeba exclusively in the second half to finally put down Utah. But he told us, though, even though they won the game handily, that he wasn't happy with it. If they won by that score playing good hard-nosed man-to-man, he would have been ecstatic. Oliver Taylor hits the three-point basket, his first of the game. 12-point lead for UNLV. They had it up to 14. About eight minutes remaining in the second half. And Anderson Hunt Gets set to check back in the game. Hoffman, air ball. Gray saves it nicely. Anthony for three. Interesting, UNLV's getting all the long rebounds, even off the offensive board. That's why your guards have to rebound. When, the jump when you're shooting jump shots, there's a tendency for the long Number rebounds. 12, That's why Anderson, you need your guards to not release, and, but they must think rebound. Stacy Augman leaves with 13 points, and Anderson Hunt is back in. In the last couple minutes, we've seen the tempo change again. UNLV now, as you see, they're allowing Seton Hall to run their offense. They're swinging the basketball. A few minutes ago, they couldn't do a thing. Taylor Anthony trying to steal it from behind, and Larry Johnson over the top will, has just committed his third personal foul with 11.33 to play. And that's been the problem with UNLV. Can they maintain that intensity? And I know how hard it is. We're talking about young kids playing college basketball to maintain it. But for them to, to live out their dream and win another national championship, they're going to have to be able to do it. Couldn't get it inbounds in five seconds. So it'll be turned over back to the Rebels. And P.J. Carlissimo sees an opportunity go by the boards there. So Larry Johnson and Greg Anthony each playing with three fouls. Overplaying and a good steal by Jerry Walker. Uh, Walker is some defensive player down there. That's some challenge for him playing Larry Johnson. Karnishevis, long rebound as he misses the three. Seton Hall gets back effectively on the defense. And Frank Gray, Anthony with a bullet pass inside. And that'll be Walker's third foul. George Ackles will come in and Larry Johnson goes out so the two centers for the Rebels are in there now Ackles and Spencer and Larry Johnson goes out having scored 22 Next Saturday, the Final Four show begins at noon Eastern, and the Women's National Semifinals follows at 12.30 Eastern. How does Anderson Hunt look to you right now, Bill? Well, we'll find out when he looks to take his jump shot, or if he gets banged, how he reacts to it. Stacy Augman will replace Gray. 
Jerry Tarkanian will never have Johnson and Augman out at the same time. Will <laughs> we all can understand why. Avent loses the ball. UNLV's picked up just about every loose ball in this game. Now, Avent has got to read the defense. When they double-team him, he's got to swing that basketball before the defense even gets there. Spencer and Axel. Both centers in there, and Elmore Spencer draws the foul, and that will be the 15th foul against the hole. Three now on Anthony Avent. Fouls at number 32, Anthony Avent. Third personal. Avent with three fouls. He played number 22, Gordon Winchester. In foul trouble against Arizona. Gordon Winchester has come in to replace Karnishevis. Karnishevis has scored just six points in this game. Both coming on three point baskets. And next week, the final four show at 5 o'clock Eastern and the men's national semifinals follow at 5.30 Eastern time. Spencer. 61 to 45. Going to have to find a way to get the hair going. Because he just is not involved at all. Walker has a shot deflected by Ackles. Still in the hands of Walker. And it's going to be UNLV ball as Aukman might have touched it, but Avent touched it last, and that is the 15th turnover committed by Seton Hall. Karnishevis replaces Avent, who goes out with three, fall, with three fouls. Avent has 11. Terry DeHair is yet to score here in the second half, Bill. He's not been involved, hasn't touched the basketball. Several situations I've noticed that when he's come off screens, they haven't set the screens for him to free himself up. Pirates get the ball back. And they, it's a foul on George Ackles. That's how they get it back, his second on George. But that's not unusual because when a team is very aggressive defensively, as we've seen UNLV during stretches of this first second half, that creates that problem for the offense to execute. UNLV is not even letting Seton Hall get a chance to spot up for threes. Got tight, they're playing Taylor and now they're here. Yeah, they're back in that zone. Taylor gets inside the line and misses. Winchester, Carnicevic, blocked by Spencer. Up ahead to Hunt. Two men back defensively. And Hunt throws the ball away. Johnson, who has hit 9 of 11 from the field and leads with 22, checks back in for the Rebels. Now watch the shot. Watch them get on the glass. Tarnisovic goes up. Spencer says no. Also checking in, number 10. Avent with three fouls is back in for Seton Hall in the front court, and Brian Caver. Replaces Taylor at point guard for Seton Hall. He's got the ball. Get it inside to Anthony Avent. Running Rebels have outscored Seton Hall 22 to 11 so far in the second half after leading by three after 20 minutes. Four points. That's more than he scored against Utah. Uh, that's too tough a matchup for the freshman Carnishivas. He physically, at this stage of his career, just cannot deal with a Larry Johnson in the low post. And a great play on the baseline by Kaber for his first points. As he said, this is for the student championship. He looks at Larry Johnson. He says, was I right about saying student the way he looks? Looks like a truck, the way he handles himself inside. A runs again, a runaway truck. Good box out by Avent. The lead is 14 for UNLV. Nearly eight and a half minutes remaining in the second half. The right to go to the final four. Turnover. It's going to be running Rebels ball. This is what it's like dealing with Larry Johnson on the inside. He just pushes. Car Karnishevis up the lane has no choice but just let him to score. Larry
Larry Johnson has led the UNLV in scoring in all their tournament games so far, doing it again today. Ackles replaces Spencer in the lineup. Yes, David trying to get him to pick up his fourth foul. He gets the basket, does Larry Johnson. Now he shows this he can go to his right, then he shows this going to the left, using the left hand. He's hit a three-point shot today. What else? That's all you need. Faber try to get it to Winchester. How about a few steals? He's got those, too. In fact, he's led the team in steals in the tournament coming in. Seton Hall's got to pick up the pace at the defensive end of the court. They're going to have to get out and deny some passes, gamble a little, a little bit at the defensive end. Larry Johnson dominating this game every which way. 28 points. And it looks easy for the way the Rebels are playing now. Uh, and, and now they're going to try and use a little bit of the clock when they go to their set offense. And one thing that... Seton Hall has got to look to do is give some help to the big people when the Larry Johnson has the ball. Come back when he puts the ball on the floor, force him to give it up. A tradition unlike any other, the Masters on CBS. Saw you walking home with that same boy yesterday. Yeah, that's Donald, Dad. Uh -huh. You two gonna get married? Daddy, I'm 13 years old. Oh, then I don't have to worry about giving you away. No. Oh. Mm -mm. Well, that giving away stuff doesn't really happen anyway. What do you mean? Well, even after you marry Donald, we'll yeah. always be here for you. Mass Mutual, we help you keep your promises. It begins with the efficiency of sequential port fuel injection. It flows through a power plant cradled in fluid-filled mountings, and it manifests itself in the precision of Bonneville's fully independent suspension. This is advanced technology you can feel. This is full-sized excitement from Pontiac. This is Bonneville. Seattle, the scene of the Western Regional Final between UNLV and Seton Hall. And after a three-point deficit, UNLV with a 28 to 13 edge in the second half. They're doing it by turnovers, converted into fast break points, and Larry Johnson having a phenomenal game with 28 points. And 12 for 15 from the field, and UNLV's defense has held Seton Hall to 35 percent shoot. Let's not forget the defense that they're applying to Terry DeHair. Terry DeHair is 0 for 3 in this second half, and that's been, for the most part, Greg Anthony, and at times, uh, Hunt has been out on him on the defensive end. They've been depending on him for 20 points a game. He's got 12 right now, but nothing here in this half. 67-49. Now, with this amoeba defense, it'll slow the tempo down, but right now, they'd like to see Seton Hall run some time off the clock. <laughs> 45 seconds. No bad. They didn't get that shot up before that 45-second clock expired, right? Double zero on the horn. We're up there. It was a moot point. Missed anyway. Trying to stretch the lead to 20. UNLV has not had a 20-point lead in this game. George Ackles gives it to them. What an exclamation point that is. First basket of the game for Ackles. Three different Rebels are in double figures, led by Johnson with 28. But that doesn't mean he's not playing an excellent game. Blocking some shots and active defense. 
offensively. The thing that's so impressive about this team as a whole is how each player is willing to sacrifice a little bit of himself for the betterment of the team and enjoying the great success that they've had the all year. Amen is back in the game. Stacy Ogwin picks up his third foul. Of course, Jerry Tarkani was talking about the chemistry and how much the players like each other, and sometimes people think that's all just vanilla stuff, but it really means something with this club. And they have the same feeling towards their coach, Jerry Tarkani. The lead of 20, biggest of the game, Jerry Walker. Jerry likes inside for the layup. Two years ago, Seton Hall defeated UNLV 84 to 61 to win the West Regional in Denver. Before the Hall lost to Michigan in overtime in the championship game here. A different year. It sure is. Now we see Vegas showing a lot of patience, looking to use that 45-second block. That's why I'm saying Seton Hall's got to get out and pressure a little bit more defensively and gamble on some steals. Larry Thompson ah! through, no basket. They're going to call George Ackles with a foul. Now the question is, did Ackles go up on someone's shoulder, allowing him to get this tip? Let's hear it now. <laughs> that was two points. He got a bad call. Arturis Karnishevis on the line. Tomorrow, North Carolina and Temple. How do you look at that game, Bill? Uh, Temple, the, the lowest seed team, and it's still living in the, in the NCAA tournament, playing great basketball. Mark Macon coming back from, well, his last trip to East Rutherford was a nightmare, but yesterday he carried the Temple Owls to a victory over Oklahoma State. A great game. Carolina's been looking very tough, though, ever since they won that ACC tournament over Duke. Getting close to the five-minute mark. Kansas already in the final four. And one of the problems when you play this team, well, that's one of the problems, but <laughs> when I say go out of pressure and deny this UNL ball club, they have all five players are so quick that they can step out and receive the basketball. It's so tough on the defense to come out and deny them. But their defense is what made this all happen for them. They're going to count the basket, goaltending. Charge to Ackles, and Jerry Walker will get credit for the basket. Larry Johnson will inbound. 30 points for Larry Johnson. 71 to 55. The Rebels lead the Pirates. Four and a half minutes to play. Any of the teams watching today that are going to have a chance to play against this team in, Indi in Indianapolis, they better get to the loose ball. Because if they don't, it'll be number two for the UNLV running Reds. Oliver Taylor on the last basket. The Rebels will play the winner of the Duke St. John's game tomorrow for the Midwest Regional Championship in Pontiac. And a personal foul against Karnishevis, and that'll be his fourth. Timeout here in Seattle. This is for personal foul. Every display precisely detailed. Every control thoughtfully placed. Every texture carefully crafted. Every aspect of the Bonneville SSE's spacious interior is designed for a single purpose, to place you in a position of power and control. The 1991 Bonneville SSE, full-size driving excitement from Pontiac.
airline that spans 10 countries across Asia and the Pacific now brings you United's renowned international service non-stop to London's Heathrow Airport from five U.S. cities. Come fly the airline that's uniting the world. Come fly the friendly skies. Monday, how husbands are using a legal loophole to cheat their wives out of alimony payments. The story Monday on the CBS Evening News with Dan Rather. Back at the, back at the kingdom where UNLV is in control, I'm here with Mike Trangisi, Commissioner of the Big East. Mike, you have two teams in the final eight. Is this the Seton Hall we saw all year? Is UNLV that dominant? Yeah, I think UNLV is that dominant. Defensively, they're as good as a team as I've seen since the great defensive teams of Georgetown in the early 80s, Les. What do you see for the team at St. John's? What do they have to do to beat Duke? St. John's has to play at the top of their game because I think Duke is the one team that can be very dangerous because they've had the experience of already playing UNLV. Maybe there's one more win in that sweater. Dick? All right, Leslie and Mike. Got to be proud of what the Big East has accomplished. Billy, I'd like to get your opinion on what would be another meeting if Duke were to beat St. John and to play UNLV. Oh, I, I think that this team is an outstanding basketball team, number one, but invincible, no. Uh, that, that they have to be at the top of the game, their game when they go to Indianapolis. And I think there's some things that you have to do against them, though. I think that at the defensive end of the court, you have to have that third man back defense that can stop their transition. Or as a How about their inside? Inside, I would have someone doubling down on Larry Johnson. I would have a game plan that I would not allow Larry Johnson to beat me, or at least I'd try to have that philosophy, would not beat me on the inside. So that means that if he did receive the basketball, I'd have someone doubling him down low on the post. By George Ackles. Terrific play. That's why I said when you look at George Ackles, it might not be any numbers. He just has a few points out here today, but he does so many other things with blocking shots, running the court, helping out defensively. Three blocks today by Ackles. Here's that man, Larry Johnson. Gets his own rebound, blocked by Avent. Good play by Avent that time. the problems the teams are going to have playing against this team. I think the other point is that the offensive end of the court, you're going to have to force them to pay for their overplaying aggressive defense. And I think if you have a guard, number one, that can handle the ball and beat, you know, Craig Anthony off the dribble and penetrate with an open court, that can create problems. Spreading the court, forcing if they do come out and deny, look for backdoor opportunities. That, if you do those couple things, that might make them a little less aggressive out there in the court because they're getting hurt with easy baskets. Terry DeHare will come in for Seton Hall. Everett Gray on the right. Each Waldman on the left coming back in. Waldman making his first appearance. Larry Johnson's going to go out of the game. Having scored 30 points, six rebounds, 13 of 19 from the field. UNLV led by three at halftime, and the Rebels scored the first 11 points of the second half, seven of them by Larry Johnson. And in the semifinal, he scored the first nine against Utah in the second half. So. You know, I think with all the controversy surrounding that man, we tend to forget what a great coach he is. This man has been in coaching for 30 years, and I think this man should be, surely has the qualifications if they win this year, or not if, even if they don't win this year, to be in the Hall of Fame. I don't think there's any question about that. Does he have the Al Davis syndrome, the L.A. Raiders? <laughs> That's another, another issue. 75-57 with 120 to play. UNLV. They weren't as sharp, proved in the second half. Back to the way they were. Winchester with the follow-up. Winchester. Daryl Christ, a sophomore guard, has come into the lineup for Seton Hall. Under a minute to go. And a Winchester fouls Augman. The coordinating producer 
of NCAA basketball on CBS is Bob Dikas. Today's West Regional Final was produced by Bob Stenner and directed by Larry Cavallina. The Road to the Final Four was produced by David Winner and directed by Duke Strzok. The senior producer of CBS Sports is Ed Gorin, and the executive producer of CBS Sports is Ted Shaker. When we look at this Seton Hall basketball team, there's only two seniors on this club. That's Anthony Avent and Oliver Taylor that we'll see the rest of this team back again. They should be very proud of what they've been able to achieve this season. Winning 12 of their last 14 games. As P.J. Carlissimo said, well, we must try to establish a program, and I think they've done that. Oh, he sure has. And his career reminds me a great deal of Dean Smith's career. Because Dean Smith struggled early in his career uh, as a coach. P.J. Colissimo was on the hot seat there at, at Seton Hall. But now we, we talk about P.J. Colissimo being one of the top five or six coaches in the country. And uh, he surely warrants that uh, high regard. And his record is not bad in NCAA play nine and three after this one. It's amazing what players do for programs, though. <laughs> Terry DeHair hits a three-point basket. And... That is his first points of the second half for Terry DeHair, and that's one of the one of the cogs that UNLV has shut down effectively here. And our Chevrolet players of the game, Anthony Avent of Seton Hall, and Larry Johnson with 30 points. The season's high, by the way, was 35. And also his career high against Michigan State earlier in the year. They'll see each other at the next level. Waldman and Rice in the game. Melvin Love is in for UNLV with Everett Gray and Travis Bice. UNLV will get to the final four for the second year in a row and third time in the last five years. Trying to win that second national title. Last team to do it. Back to back UCLA. Back in 73. Crisp with a three. Darrell Crisp. Well, it's going to be fun time in Indianapolis after they finish up tomorrow and we find out who those four teams are going to be competing for that great honor, the national championship. And everyone will still ask the question, can anyone still beat UNLV? The game is over. UNLV wins it 77 to 65, and they'll go to Indy. performance by the running rebels remaining undefeated at 34 and 0 this year and 45 and 0 so tart will advance unlv wins the western regional they'll play the winner of st john's and duke at the hoosier dome Leslie Visser, Dick Stockton here at the Kingdom in Seattle. And right now, let's send you back to our studios in New York and Pat O'Brien. All right, Dick. Uh, thank you, Dick, Billy, and Leslie as the band plays a nice rendition, by the way, of uh, We Are the Champions by Queen. Uh, the Rebels are another step towards uh, being champions in 1991. Let's remind everybody that coming up on CBS tonight, uh, CBS's special movie, Where the Hell's That Gold? Can you say hell on TV? I guess so, starring uh, Willie Nelson and Delta Burke. Tomorrow's lineup uh, here on CBS Sports, 1 o'clock, road to the Final Four. Then at 1.40, the East Regional Final, Temple in North Carolina, and at 4 o'clock, the Midwest Regional Final, St. John's and Duke. And I turn to the uh, St. John's graduate, Mike Francesa. What about this game? UNLV, true to form. Oh, what you hope to stay away from with UNLV, Pat, is getting the knockout punch. They delivered it early in the second half, 17 2 
two run, and uh, they were as good as advertised today. A tremendous second half performance by UNLV and Larry Johnson. Larry Johnson had some kind of a game. Huh? Pat, Greg Anthony started a diary in the New York Times this morning. The headline said, we've got to get more focus. This team came into focus with this game, and for the rest of the field, it wasn't a pretty sight. Let's uh, take a pause here, and then we'll uh, go back out to Seattle. I see uh, they're getting ready to talk to Tark and Larry Johnson. We'll have that for you in a minute. Stay with us. Father loved the unknown. I want a sure thing. The all-new Oldsmobile Bravada with Smart Track, a new anti-lock braking and all-wheel drive system that automatically sends power to the wheel that needs it. So I'm ready for the unexpected. Whether I'm traveling across the river and into the trees, this is the new generation. or just visiting your old man in the sea. Bravada, engineered for the unexpected. Great values, big prizes during Oldsmobile's drive to the Final Four Celathon. You can't miss. Because there are races that last 24 hours, because there are rallies that last four days, there are high-performance tires called Michelin's. When you're on the business and your customer needs something fast, you do it. Avis is the only major rent-a-car company owned by its employees, and they're trying harder with a computerized return system to get you on your way faster. Avis, we're trying harder than ever. Dear Thompson, Honey, I ran out of midway time. through waterproofing our new deck, I ran out of Thompson's water seal and finished with another oh, brand. So Two days later, it rained. It was amazing. Wow. You could actually see side. the Thompson side working. The other side looked like I hadn't used a yeah, thing. Thompson's water seal has 50% more active ingredients than most brands for more waterproofing power. You can see the difference. For my money, nothing tops Thompson's. And I proved it. Sincerely, Marsha Jack alone, Bassett, Wisconsin. Extra strength Rolaids antacid. Stronger because it has more calcium carbonate. More than any Tums tablet. And salt free. More calcium carbonate and salt free. This settles it once and for all. It's what more men reach for to prepare, to prevent, to protect. Speed Stick, 110% protection. No better way to face the day. No better way to face the day. Speed Stick, 110% protection. With us are Larry Johnson and Coach Jerry Tarkanian. And thank you very much, guys, for waiting around for a few minutes. But Coach, you got to be ecstatic about your performance today. I was really pleased the way we played the second half. I thought defensively, particularly probably the first 10 minutes, we played it. We played extremely great defense, and it got our offense going. This guy right here, you're playing like you're on a mission, Larry, all through this tournament. Well, I'm, I'm just trying to do whatever the coach has asked me to do, and I'm just trying to do what's best for my team and for my teammates. You think there's a chance we could see maybe 40 minutes of that type of intensity coach was talking about in uh, when when you get to Indianapolis? Oh, yeah, we can do it. Uh, all the fellas have to do is get their minds together and listen to the coaches, and, you know, we, we can play with that intensity for 40 minutes. Coach, how's Hunt's shoulder? He was really hurt at the uh, timeout. He was really in pain. I, I hope it's going to be okay. I'm sure it'll be okay by next week. By oh. next week. Well, coach, with this guy, Larry Johnson. Now, Larry, do you, what, what's the toughest defense?
defense for you to play against in the low post? Well, uh, for any, I think any low post player, the toughest defense to play against is like a sagging zone where you have one behind you, one in front of you, and you can re you really can't touch the ball in that type of defense. Uh, any kind of defense that you can touch the ball, you know, it's, you should be able to do okay. Well, I think they need an extra play besides that, but thanks a lot, guys, and good luck in Indianapolis. Thank you. Thank you. All right, how many NBA scouts are salivating for uh, Larry Johnson? Let's take a look at the uh, elite uh, grid that we have set up here. Now, Kansas, UNLV have advanced. Uh, North Carolina graduate over here. Curry, take that top game. North Carolina. Pat, North Carolina. Revenge is always a motivation in this game. Three years ago, Mark Macon and the Temple Owls went into Chapel Hill, beat Carolina 83-66. It's the worst defeat Dean Smith's ever suffered in the Dean Dome. He'll remind the Tar Heels of that tomorrow. Mike Francesa, St. John's Duke. St. John's Duke in the second half of that ACC doubleheader and uh, <laughs> see if that sweater has one more win in it, Pat. All right, uh, thanks for sticking around, guys. It was kind of a fun day, I thought. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow at 1 o'clock. And you know, uh, there are so many moments in this tournament. Uh, why don't we show you a couple of the shining moments? Uh, good night, everybody, from our studios in New York. Hope you had a great time with us from Basketball on CBS. The ball is fixed. You've been touched tonight. The rhythm in your shine. Your step feels like the crowd goes wild. As much as you've known. Win another game. Thank you.